So we just finished up going through this kind of crazy thing with the modified Josephus problem where we're going to like shoot every third person. Um, this is a very sad and macabre video, but we're going to shoot every third person for math because it's important, I guess. But we basically start off with having um, this many people, except you can't see what I'm drawing anymore because drawing is hard. So we were shooting every third person and then coming through here. And, and marking off. So I'm like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And then I would start giving these guys new numbers. And anyway, so I was like one, two, three, one, two, three. And now they get new numbers again. And then I go one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I get new numbers again. And then they go one, two, three, one. And then they get numbers again. 26, 27. Uh, so they go one, one, two, three. And then this dude, he gets two more numbers. He gets 28, 29. And then he, well, I guess this is not a fair game. <laughs> but the survivor is in the 30th position. So we went through and we did all of this logic. And what we were able to come up with is some pseudocode to help us figure out, well, if we're in this situation where they're shooting every third person and there's N of us, if, well, if there's N people, um, how, where would we want to stand? So the way that we show that is the Josephus problem is um, if you have the Josephus problem where you're shooting every third person and there's N people. The original version of Josephus is we're shooting every second person, and that one's been solved, so we decided we do something different. Um, but that's where all of this code's going to come from. So what we have at this point is basically the pseudocode for what we've got set up. Now, looking at the pseudocode actually is going to help us simplify this even more and then from there on generalize it to a um, kind of a, like if you're going to shoot every qth person instead of every third person. So it's kind of cool. So let's say we got the pseudocode and we're super bored, okay? because I don't really know why else you would be here right now, except maybe because you have to be. But aside from that, um, let's say that we're going to let D be equal to 3N plus 1 minus N, okay? And where that would have come from is when we had our um, previous, we had N previous is equal to 3K plus 1. So basically, we're kind of moving that over there and then just setting the whole thing equal to some new variable d. So if you're kind of wondering where that came from, it came from that n previous. But in any case, assuming we're letting d equal to 3n plus 1 minus n, that means that n is going to be equal to 3n plus 1 minus d. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to change everything in terms of d. So let's write everything in terms of d. And it's going to be super cool um, because what's going to happen, spoiler alert, is um, really pretty stuff is going to pop out. Okay, so we've got that. Now, let's come down here and take a look and see what we can do next. So the first thing that we have is we have this n equals 3n that you can see right here. So we have this n equals 3n. So we're going to come over here and we're going to say, okay, n equals 3n. And we're going to use this substitution here and just rewrite that in terms of d. So this guy is going to become, so we have n is 3n plus 1 minus d. Sorry, my voice is all like kind of crazy. Is that's going to be equal to 3n. So clearly, I was like saying that because nothing is ever clear in science. Math. Oh, it's always clear. I don't know. All right. So basically, we instead of saying n equals 3n, we can say d equals 1. Now we do have to be careful because the d and the n are both assignments. So whenever we're programming, we're really assigning the variable n. So like, I think it's pretty obvious that when you're coding, if you have something like this, you can't just be like, oh, look, both the n's cancel out. OK, so you have to be careful not to do anything like that with our numbers that are um, the, the assignments. So when we're assigning and changing the values of n and d. So we want to be careful, but this is still totally doable. So now I'm going to look at this uh, next line that we have, which is while n is greater than n. So um, we have while n is greater than n. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to say while 
3n plus 1 minus d is greater than n. And again, little n is just is not changing values throughout the while loop, so we can just go ahead and move it over. So we've got here that negative d, sorry, is that yeah, my voice sounds terrible. <laughs> it's probably not the best time to record a video. But anyway, I've got negative d is greater than negative 2n minus 1. All right? So then I'm going to come through here, and I'm going to multiply the whole thing times negative 1 because I'm kind of awesome at algebra. And that means that that all switches, 2n plus 1. Now, instead of saying that d is less than 2n plus 1, since everything is integer, I can just say that d is less than or equal to 2n. So there we go. All right, now the next thing I'm going to look at, this one's going to be even better. Come here, girl. All right, whatever. Um, I'm going to look at this one. So I'm going to change that. Now, I have to be a little careful, but it's still going to be okay. All right, and I know that was super vague and in no way helpful, but it's okay. All right, so I've got n is equal to n minus little n minus 1 over 2 plus n minus n. All right, so this... This sucker's got a lot more going on. So the n is, again, going to be replaced with 3n plus 1 minus d. But I'm going to have to plug that in a whole bunch of places. So I have 3n plus 1 minus d minus n minus 1 divided by 2. Whew, and then do that again, plus 3n plus 1 minus d, and then minus n. Okay, so... I don't want to subtract the D from both sides, okay, because that would kind of defeat the purpose. So make sure you make a note so you don't forget this later. <laughs> but this is, a, um, this is for the, in the purposes of being in our while loop, these are constant, or not, that's the opposite of what I meant to say. These change within the loop. So I can't just go around and s cancel them out. I can combine them on one side, um, so I can combine this one and this one eventually. I just can't move it over to the other side. So it can combine because on same side. Yay! Okay, so I can, however, totally get rid of the 3n because it's just a stupid constant and actually can totally get rid of the plus 1 because it's also just a stupid constant. Stupid constant. I'm sorry, constant. I didn't mean it. All right, so I've got minus d, and this is all kinds of crazy in here. Well, not really, but we'll just, you know, it keeps the kids excited. Um, so I've got 2n and then plus 1 minus 1 minus d. Yeah, 2n minus d. All right. And then all that gets divided by 2. And then on the outside, I've got the minus d minus n. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this whole equation again by negative 1. So I've got that d is equal to, well, this is going to be the negative of the floor, 2n minus d over 2 plus d plus n. Now, I'm just going to rewrite it a little bit to make the math a little bit more straightforward. I'm not going to say easier. There's nothing I can do to make this easier because it's already so straightforward, right? All right, um, minus n minus d over 2. Okay, now, um, because d over 2 is going to be an integer, I actually can do something kind of neat here. So, um, because d is an integer, I can separate this term out. So, instead of having uh, the floor of n minus a half of d, I can separate that out into, um, and if it, if it helps, I can kind of do in a little aside here. So I've got n plus a negative d over 2. Okay. So if I floor both of these, since n is an integer, and um, I'm just adding these together, it's not a multiplication. I'm actually more worried about multiplication than I am with, um, with addition. And since n is an integer, it's like if I have the floor of 3 plus, I don't know, like 0.5, that's going to give me the same thing as if I do 3 times the floor of 0.5. Um, and I know it's negative, but it's the same, it's the same concept. Um, or even if I have 3 plus the floor of, you know, 7.2, um, or 
the floor of 3 plus 7.2. That's going to be the same as 3 times the floor or 3 plus the floor of 7.2. The only reason that works is because n is an integer. If n was not an integer, that would definitely not work. But anyway, since it is an integer, that means that I can come through here and I can say, all right, so that's going to be the same thing as n plus the floor of negative d over 2. Okay, so that's the substitution I'm going to make right here. So I'm going to say minus n plus the floor of negative d over 2. And I'm just going to distribute the negative. This is kind of tricky. I mean, it's, it is, but it isn't. It's tricky enough that I'm being really careful with my steps because it's easy to do something dumb if you're not used to working with floors and ceiling functions. Well, this is just floor functions, but now I've got that going there. Okay. Now, resist the urge to distribute that negative, <laughs> okay? Resist, 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 resist the urge to distribute the negative. This is not equal to d plus the floor of d over 2. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just not mathematically reasonable to do that. So let's just look at some examples and I'll kind of show you. So let's say I've got, well, I'll show you why. So let's say that d is 6. So if I have 6 plus, or let's say, well, we'll go with the original over here. If I have 6 minus the floor of negative 6 over 2, that gives me 6 minus a negative 3. The floor of negative 3 is negative 3. All right, and that gives me 9. Now, if I was going to do a plus, then I do 6 plus the floor. Oh, this is unfortunate because I think this is going to give me the same answer. Oh, I know why. It's because 6 is even. Well, anyway, so it does work here. Look, children. And this is, I guess, part of the problem with doing this kind of stuff is um, when you're testing these stupid floor functions, you've got to be careful because in this case, my floor or the thing inside my floor was an integer. So I didn't really get the full effect of the floor function. So this is good. But <laughs> how's that? We'll pretend that was a pedagogical strategy. All right. Um, so let's say that D is equal to 7. All right, so now I've got 7 minus negative 7 over 2. So that's going to be 7 minus the floor of negative 3.5. There we go. So that's negative 4. So that's going to be 7 plus 4 is 11, like that. Now if I go 7 plus the floor of 7 over 2, that's going to give me 7 plus the floor of 3 and a half. This is 7 plus 3. That's only equal to 10. 10 is not equal to 11. Okay, so that's how you can see that I can't just distribute. That was the whole point of that discussion, by the way. The whole point of that discussion is I can't simplify um, D with a, um, I can't just put that negative sign in there, which is kind of sad. However, what I can do is I can actually show that, and there's, there's proofs I can do. So I'm not going to show prove prove. I'm just going to like, Look, it clearly works for two values, therefore it obviously has to work for all of them. So instead of distributing the negative like that, what we actually can do, so I'm going to put an exclamation point, it is in fact um, equal to d plus the ceiling of d over 2. And you might be able to see that just kind of looking at our example with the 7. Um, so obviously, obviously, that's a great word, um, obviously with the 6, we're still going to get, um, so I've got, I'm still going to get the 9, but if I go 6 plus the ceiling of 6 over 2, that's still going to be 6 plus 3 is still equal to 9. But over here on the right, where I've got um, the 7, I've got 7 plus the ceiling of 7 over 2, and that's going to give me the ceiling of 3 and a half, which is 4, and that's what I wanted. So this makes me happy, and I make fireworks. These are fireworks. They kind of look like weeds or just scribbles. We'll pretend they're happy. It makes me a happy panda instead of a sad panda. All right, that's panda, and he's happy. So there. Um, anyway, so that's pretty cool that we can um, – it, it, it's so counterintuitive because you wouldn't think it, but I can, in fact – I, I, I can distribute the negative, but when I distribute the negative, I have to flip the floor to a ceiling. I don't do this kind of stuff enough that I always just do that without thinking every time I have to do something like that. I have to go prove it off to the side just to make sure because I get all nervous, you know, 
it's like hanging out with a new friend and you're like, ooh, do they like me? Can I do this with this algebra? And they're like, maybe. All right, so I'm going to kind of schnook this out of the way. All right, so that, in fact, does not work. But what does work, or I mean, I can't do that. I can't distribute that negative. But as we just demonstrated, I can do the plus sign if I flip over. It's a funny looking D. So now I can continue to go and I can put those in just like I could take them out up here. Remember how we said over here I could take them out because integer, the same one, because n is an integer for the same reason, I can also combine them together. So because d is integer, because d is integer, because the d is an integer, I can go ahead and put that in. So I can just go like my little 2d over 2 and combine them to get 3d over 2. All right. So in case you forgot what we were doing, because I'm pretty much sure I have, what we were trying to do is go in here and we were going to reduce this monstrosity. And we've reduced it to this darling little equation right there. Isn't that cute? It makes me super happy. Okay, so we were able to reduce that. And then at the end of the day, the last thing I want to do is I know my answer is n, so I just have one more of these to do. So instead of displaying n, I'm going to um, just display the 3n plus 1 plus or minus d. Okay, because that's, that's all there is to change. So, so now our new code. We have new code. This is so exciting. I love code. So our new code, I'm just going to go and I'm going to grab all these things that are boxed in. So d equals 1, while d is, so d equals 1, while d is less than or equal to 2n, um, do this and then display this new value. So my new code, I'm going to start off with d equals 1. While d is less than or equal to 2n, d is going to be equal to the ceiling of 3d over 2. And then I'm going to display my answer, which is 3n plus 1 minus d. Now, what's amazing about this, and this is maybe a leap of faith, and it's one of those things that I could say for funsies, go do this on your own, but... You can take all of these methods that we've done and you can actually go in and generalize it. So this was solving the Josephus problem where I shoot every third person and there's n people, right? Well, without too much effort, you can actually go through here, through here and say, well, what if I want to solve the qth person if I'm going to shoot every qth person? So a lot of this isn't going to change, but when you can see this, well, I'll say while... Now, if you kind of think about the relationship between 2 and 2 and 3, so the relationship between 2 and 3, and then here we have a 3 that is also related to a 3 because you know they're the same thing. Um, I'm really good at talking. I speak awesome. So basically now, instead of saying, well, d is less than twice n, we're going to say, well, d is less than q minus 1 times n. Okay, so... Um, instead of doing the 3, 3 minus 1 would be 2. So instead of 3, we could say, or instead of 2, we could say q minus 1. So while d is less than q minus 1, d is going to take on the value of the ceiling of q times d over q minus 1. So basically, everywhere we see a 3, we put a q. Everywhere we see a 2, we put a q minus 1. And then I'm going to display at the end of the day, my answer is going to be instead of 3n, it's qn plus 1 minus d. So I don't know if I could have seen this that well looking at this old code um, because here, I mean, I guess the twos and the threes are there and I, I guess it probably would work out that same way. Um, but it is a bit more obfuscated because these are so complicated and I think probably the first 18 times I tried to do this video, I kept dropping negatives and throwing things in weird spots. Um, so being able to come down here and write this in this kind of a format is just really, really straightforward. And it's kind of cool that by solving this problem in this really kind of weird way, we're actually able to generalize the, the absolute, like miscellaneous, I don't say miscellaneous, but the, the absolute general um, Josephus problem. So it's, it's kind of cool.